Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Adam here with Retro Repairs and time for another quick repair video. So, right in front of me, as you can see, we've got Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo. And this particular cartridge just does not work. So, I'm going to show you quickly what happens when I try and turn it on. And we're going to open her up and see what happens. So, as you can see, no signal. Power off, power on, still no signal. Let's make sure that we've got the proper, yep, AV selected. So just nothing there. Just gonna show a test uh, cartridge just to make sure that the console is working properly and hooked up. Okay, so here I've got my handy um, Super Nintendo test cartridge. So turn that on and there you see Super NES service, so. Flip that off, Super Nintendo goes in, or Super Mario World goes in, still nothing. So let's open her up, let's see uh, what's happening. So opening Super Nintendo cartridge is pretty easy. We've got two screws at the front, which you need a special screwdriver to remove. There are ways to get around that, but uh, they only cost a couple bucks from Amazon or eBay, so I highly recommend picking one of these up. So let's open up the cartridge and see what we've got. So we've got a hair. Um, first thing I notice is a little bit of residue down here. The pins are in pretty rough shape. So I'm gonna clean this first and foremost. Um, to do that, I prefer to just use some 99% isopropyl alcohol and some Q-tips and then just go to town. I'm gonna start with cleaning up above the pins where all this wear appears to be sitting. See how we're getting some uh, color on that Q-tip. So do these pins as well a little bit. And then just kind of dry it a little bit with dry Q-tip. And just for fun, I want to try that. See if on the off chance that all that that need is all that that needed. So let's uh, plug it into the cart or the console. Power on. Still no signal. So clearly a little bit uh, more is necessary. Still nothing. All right, so next step is gonna be uh, involve inspecting each of these traces one by one. So getting the shell out of the way, we're gonna go back to the board. And what I'm gonna do for this is use my multimeter, have it set into continuity mode, so it's gonna beep when you complete the circuit. So all I'm doing now, testing these one by one. Find the pin, find where it goes to. And I'm just looking for that beep. If I find a missing beep, that tells me that that there's a break in the circuit somewhere. Okay, so I've been unable to sort out where this particular pin here goes to. So what I'm going to do, it goes under this chip, um, but I cannot find anywhere that it will connect to. None of these pins on this chip are connecting to it. Doesn't connect to this resistor, the battery, this capacitor. And I've even peeled back a bit of the solder mask on some of these traces that are going off to the side here, and it does not connect to that. So what I'm gonna do, peel back a little bit of the solder mask above where that wear is, just to see if I get a connection up here. That should give me a pretty good indication. And I do not, so we found a break on this board. So what I'm gonna do here is go back and scrape up the entire trace, try to see if I can pinpoint where that break is. I think I even see it right here. 
Let's see if we can uh, tidy this up and pick it up on the camera. Okay, so you can see it right there. Um, so that's that break that I'm going to need to solder over. So I've warmed up my soldering iron. I'm going to try, what I'm going to do is actually use a very small amount of wire and just bridge that break. So to do that, I'm going to grab my flux pen, get my solder ready. There it is. I'm going to see if I can do this without blocking too much of your view here. I got a new... Uh, Doing this on a new phone I actually bought, so it's got a much better zoom. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll be able to see this. So I'm gonna flux this all up, get a nice puddle of flux on there. Grab my soldering iron. Gonna put a blob of solder on the iron itself. Called tinning it. I need to clean that more. There we go. So. That's a cleaner tip. Put some solder right on there. I'm just going to run it over top of this brake to tin the trace. You don't want to get too much on the actual pin itself, and if you do, that's okay. We can use solder wick to simply wick it off. There we go. So I'm going to add a little bit more right there. All right, so clean the tip again, clean that off. So you can see right there, we've got a nice shiny, uh, shiny bit of solder on there. You can see that break is still there. So I couldn't just simply bridge that by using solder. You'd have to use a lot more solder. So just to show you that, no continuity, but from there we're getting it. So now what I'm going to do, grab a little piece of wire, very thin wire, don't need much at all. And I'm going to reflux all of this as well as the wire itself. And the flux, it helps to clean the surface. It's a corrosive material, so it eats away at oxidization that might be there. Um, but it's going to help bond the solder to, or bond the metals to the solder. So let's uh, clean that tip, put a little bit more solder on it. And then the tricky part is lining it up, solder it into place. There we go. That should hold just fine. So now, what do I do with my clippers? There they are. Use flush cutters to cut it as close to the board as you possibly can. And then one more time, we're going to clean this up. So there's a little tail kind of right up at the top here, so I'm going to also cut that. Okay, so let's put this back in its shell and give it another test to see if that happened to be the only problem there. Hopefully it was because I didn't see any other broken traces. So let's get that back right there. I'm not gonna, oops, there we go. I'm not going to put the screws in quite yet because just so it's easy to open back up if necessary. Okay, so game's in. But still no signal. So that's too bad. So the search continues to find what else could be wrong here. All right, well, so that did not fix the issue. So one thing I do want to do though, is gonna go back and reflow all these solder points on here. So reflowing is really simple. 
Um, just put some solder on your tip, heat up each of these solder points, let the solder flow on it. Sometimes you need to introduce new solder. Let's zoom in a bit more. There we go. Now it's going nicely. Hopefully camera's able to pick that up. All right, so I think I've got all of them. Um, sometimes what I also like to do is flow some solder into these vias. Sometimes they can wear through as well and prevent the signal from going through the board properly. Okay, so that all should be okay. So I'm gonna go back on the other side and fill these vias completely that didn't come all the way through. All right, so uh, moment of truth, I guess. Let's see if that happened to do the trick at all. Um, sometimes common, common fault comes from, I believe it's this chip here, and that's the lockout chip, but uh, we're gonna try this first, see if this happened to solve the issue. And look at that, we have 
Super Mario World. So empty. Um, we might have a bad battery. So while we're here, let's uh, swap out the battery. So battery replacements are pretty straightforward. Um, you do need desoldering wick or a desoldering gun and a soldering iron to do it properly. There are ways to do it without. However, I don't like those ways. So what I'm going to do, put some flux on the two battery points. Of course, you're going to need to get yourself a new battery. They make batteries with tabs. Now, you notice this particular battery, the tabs go through the board. Um, this one, they're actually flat, so they're designed for surface mount application. You can bend them and fit them in place as well, which is what I'm going to do here, as I don't have the ones that go through. However, battery fits, it will do the trick, just a little slight battery modification required. So, to desolder, the easiest thing that I like to do first is add more solder. So, let's, uh, let's zoom in. So going to heat up that pad, add some new solder to it, that kind of really soak in there, same thing over here, heat it up, add some solder, look it up there, and then clean your soldering iron. Now, you might be asking why are we adding solder when we need to remove the solder? Well, the solder on here is probably about 30 years old, um, actually, yeah slightly under 30 years old, 26 years old most likely. So um, it gets old, it doesn't really play nice. Now adding new solder, mixes it up with some fresh stuff, makes it a lot easier to lift out. So now going to just take the soldering braid, touch it up against that pad and let it soak up some of that solder. Sometimes helps to push the pad over or the uh, pin over and go at it from the other side as well. Okay, so there's still a bit there, but we're on the right track. Do the same thing over here. So heat it up, get your soldering iron in there. And it should wick right into that desoldering braid. And same thing coming at it from the other side. Okay, so we'll see if that's enough just to lift it right out. Not quite. So sometimes, once you get it down to just a little bit that's still holding in, wiggling it helps. But if it doesn't, grab yourself a pair of tweezers, just apply a little bit of pressure and then heat up that pad more. This one is stubborn, does not want to come out. Well, we'll try to start from the other side. Oops. There we go. So the solder let go and it has now come out. It's almost out. There we go. So that's one side of it out. Um, from this side, I'm actually gonna heat up this end and it should just lift straight out. So a little, too much solder wicked onto the other side of the board and that was causing it to really hold in there. So let's uh, get my solder wick and open up this hole again. A 
There we go. All right, so you just got to figure out how which way this was aligned. So positive was going down this side, which was in here. So grabbing the new battery, the top being positive, we're going to fold this down. Once I find my needle nose pliers, there they are. So I'm going to fold this one straight down. So it will fit into that hole. And then the next one, we need to actually trim slightly so that it will go into this smaller hole as the tab is just too big. So using some sort of cutters, you just want to trim it back enough. See how that fits. Okay, that's a start, but I don't really like it. Okay, so I've gotten that a little bit longer and shorter, so it should fit through. There we go, fits through pretty well. And then same with the other side. So let's get that put to the side. And now, first thing for re-soldering, you wanna clean this pad really nicely. All right, now, Put the battery in place. Add some flux to it. In there, yes it is. And let's see if we can zoom in a little better for you. Now it's time to solder. So grab your iron, grab your solder, heat up that pad and the tab, and then start dumping solder in there. Hold it for a second, let it sit to cool, and move to the next one. Right, that actually was not a very good solder job on this one. Did not flow nicely, so we're gonna heat up the other side again just to make sure that's good. There we go. We've got a nice even blob of solder connecting it to the entire pad. So let's uh, clean that up a bit. I don't like to leave extra flux on here, so try and get as much of it up as we can. Then throw her in the shell and let's try her out again. All right, so turn her on and we're gonna get into a quick game. I'm just gonna go to the first level, save it and get out. All right, so we're in, let's get out, remove it. This is just gonna test that the uh, save actually does work. And there we go, Mario A0. So we now have a working battery. So just one more thing I wanted to do quickly, and just uh, that's touching up those pins one more time. Okay, so one last uh, kind of preventative step on here, just to make sure it works every time. Um, just to clean these pins. Now, I already went at it once with alcohol, but I found something that works much better. And that's just a normal old pencil eraser. So, starting at the bottom, just go up and down each pin. And we're just trying to get all the tarnish or residue or whatever might be on there off those pins. So, you'll see I've done... Let's see if I can get a good glare of the light. That doesn't really pick up very well. 
I can notice it in person, but I've done about to there and it does look better. Unfortunately, I don't really see it through the camera, but reason I'm doing this mainly is because, well, firstly, those pins do show considerable wear, but also the very first time I plugged this in to test it after the repair or after the, uh, the battery, it uh, didn't work. So I was concerned that I screwed something up with the battery, which is very unlikely as the battery is really shouldn't affect anything. Um, but I removed it, reinserted it, and it was fine. So that told me that the, some of the pins were just getting a bad connection. So this helps just to make sure that there's nothing gross on those. So one more hit with the rubbing alcohol and we should be set. Okay, so back in the shell. We're gonna put those screws back in. And we're just gonna live test it in one take just to make sure that this works every time. All right, so. There we go, Nintendo presents. Let's try it again, remove, reinsert. There we go, so we are good. So that's uh, a couple quick repairs, but a couple things to check when you've got a, a uh, Super Nintendo cartridge that just doesn't work, so. Hopefully at least something in there is going to be useful to people. I uh, really appreciate everyone watching. Hope you're able to learn something from this and be able to restore your own games. So thanks a lot for watching. Be sure to like the video, leave a comment below, let me know what you think, and uh, subscribe to my channel. Get updates whenever I post new content. But uh, until next time, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next episode.